no I TSM wonder, wanted lead. Yeah, I wonder if this is okay. Oh, oh, oh! Snap picks on the Aurelia and the Diana. What do you make of this, Emily? Well, one thing I was even—I mean, the Aurelia Diana is a, a shock, but uh, the the one thing that I'm curious about is the zigs. I'm wondering if this is a zigs angle for TSM only mm. because C9 has. You know, they've talked about it in interviews. Their ban strategy thus far has supported that they really do not want zigs coming through. So I'm super curious to see if that comes out for TSM in first rotation. But no, we're just responding with Azir. So I want TSM to draft Leona. Right, I think this is Sword Art's best champion. Uh, I think it gives them a lot more agency at every single point in the game. And I think it gives them engage options that they've been lacking in the last two games. I think Leona will be fine here. You can peel against the Aurelia, the Diana, great. It's been target banned against Sword Art. But I also am thinking about the Zin ban, and I think this tells me that they wanted to oh. ensure that TSM would first pick the Lee. You ban the other jungler, you make TSM make huh. the choice, you're gonna have to take Lee, and you want a strategy against it. So this is C9's prepped composition against a Lee priority TSM. All right, so we see the Aurelia picked, and in response, TSM says, sure, let's take both of our solo laners. That feels a little strange to me only because you now give mm. Cloud9 the agency to decide which one of these Aurelia is gonna play into yeah. and counterpick yeah. the other. Yeah, and in addition to that, you give away Vivarius, which is a hugely important pick for both of these teams. You give away support pick as well. So I'm, I like the Camille overall, but I think it's a bit early. I also want to deviate to a little something that we called out earlier. I didn't think it would be relevant, but it proved to be so. Perks has a different hat. So he started off oh. with a different hat in the first oh two games. Oh Normally he had the black Cloud9 hat. Whoa, Look at that. He's online. He swapped back to the mm. hat that has actually got him more wins. The last hat was not it. So I think that this is him warming up now. He's Wait a now second. giving more breathing room to the head. Where would does we he be have a Does he have a higher win rate on this hat? Because he has a 50% win rate on the other one. Ah. Yeah, we got to get go check the stats. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to push past this. Uh, <laughs> and get us back to what matters, and that's the champion selected hand. We got Callista banned by Cloud9. We got the Jace banned for TSM. So it seems to me that they are at least targeting maybe the match, those one or two specific matchups they don't want the Camille to have. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're basically saying, like, we are taking, presumably, the matchup top. Um, which is a apparently what Huni wants with this Camille into the Aurelia. Uh, I like the Galio takeaway as well. Galio Camille is just an insanely strong combination. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also like C9 taking away the Callista because it takes some of that cryo that they've had bot side in the previous two games from uh, Callista and then also the Varus is already picked. So they, sh they are going to have to pick something that probably doesn't have as much, um, as much leaning power they, oh, go ahead. They think this is definitely Perks' is Aurelia, then. That's you're, my assumption right. as well. I mean, just yeah. based on player, yeah. you know, I would assume Fudge that Perks is good wants at it. it. No, I mean, they, they can flex it. I mean, No, but, I know they can. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I, would, I would be operating under the same assumption TSM is, though, as well. Mm -hmm. I think the question is whether or not, you know, you convince uh, Cloud9 to, you know, to take a top by virtue of, you know, uh, of what you've banned. I mean, just, I'm thinking about what TSM has gotten already on the blue side draft. They already get their best jungler. They get to take the Azir into mid, which from their assumptions of that, this is an Irelia top. They've already countered the top side matchup by picking the Camille, and then they're gonna counter their bottom lane right now. They just see the Cloud9 bot blinded. So I think TSM gets to draft exactly against what Cloud9 is playing, and that's gotta feel really good when you consider that red side is normally the draft that gets all the counter picks. What an incredible pivot, though, uh, overall for the team comp of TSM in terms of where their power curve is, mm -hmm. due, you know, against game time. Yeah, and uh, I actually, I'm not sure that I agree with uh, Crumbs that TSM is, is getting the better of the draft here. Uh, like when I think about how these teams want to play early game and the kind of proactivity that you want to see out of them, I think, again, the Leona is really, really key. I'm, I think um, it was a little bit odd still uh, for Camille to be drafted this early. There's no way Camille was going to get banned. I don't think it's a pick that is typically associated with Huni. Um, but I think that TSM does have good options, particularly when you're running multiple melee and you have a, you're, you're running a, a Brahm, so you can proc his passive. Uh, but overall, I actually favor the C9 draft. I see what you're saying when it comes to simply the champions. 
Well, but when you put the name plates on the champions, and when you see Spika Lee Sin, mm -hmm. this guy's X Factor on this champion. All right. Well, we know what each of my analysts favor, but at the end of the day, it's up to the players out there on the Rift. We're loading up for game three between TSM and Cloud9. Freak and Azale, hopefully you've had a moment to catch your breath for another wild game of action. Take it away. Absolutely, Dash. The Doug duo never says die. <laughs> it's all gas, no breaks. All gas, no breaks. All gas. TSM and Cloud9, one and one in this series. The loser is done. They don't play any more league until the next year. The winner qualifies for the 2021 World Championships. They get a battle against 100 Thieves. They get a chance to win the LCS trophy. For TSM, that would be eight times, which is absurd. Cloud9, it would be five. Which is not absurd. It doesn't get it's its less own. absurd it its than adjective. TSM, who already have seven. Only TSM gets an adjective. Talk about bias casters. Sorry, when you have the most of anyone else in the league, <laughs> turns out you get the superfluous <laughs> adjectives. <laughs> All right. Well, it's something, something to aspire to yeah. for everyone. Yeah. That's the real reason. Win to more try than to everyone win else. More titles. So That's aspirational. <laughs> This is free cool will give you a fancy uh, adjective there. Yeah. All right. Top lane here. Going to be interesting. Oh, wow. This is fun. That Indeed. is actually, I love that. I love that. that we'll see how much damage he takes Wait, on the way out. He grasp, though. <laughs> Fudge, I think, might have won the Yeah, game. I think he did. I, I think he got too much on the return. I think Hootie actually stayed for one auto too much. Yeah. You know, if you hook shot in, you go like one auto and then back out. Uh, but he wanted to get use out of his passive. Either way, Honey showcasing how he wants to play it, right? He wants to play it aggressively. That is how you win this matchup if you do. I tend to think that the 1v1 is, is somewhat, like, slightly NAR favored, especially in the early stages. But what you have to really be worried about is post six, Camille ults you, Lee Sin shows up, you're stuck in mini NAR. That is where things go bad. The gank assist, the gank setup is just so damn good from Camille. So. Oh, not able to sidestep that. That is going to be a really good trade. And misses the boomerang. So, yeah, really nicely done by Huni. Obviously, the uh, adaptive shield uh, blocks any early autos, and it feels pretty good. Botlane is fighting back and forth as Vulcan trades Aftershock. I'm not sure if he actually... No, he did not proc Guardian. So, one thing about Botlane trading patterns, if I recall correctly, is Aftershock's cooldown is like one-third that of Guardians in the early game. So, you can ever trade Keystone for Keystone, because the cooldown is like 25 to like 80. It's like really severe. Uh, so you can like take one of those trades, trade keystones, and then just take the next fight next wave and you're up a keystone. That's a very big deal for the two on two. Yeah, yeah, these little interactions can mean a lot for sure. Ileona, we're talking about a little bit in the in the draft, you know, picking it there in, instead of trying to pick later for the 2v2 win. It just seemed like a takeaway from Sword Art because it has been his kind of most consistent champ, the champ he almost always looks to. And this is gonna be an exciting one. It's a very different draft than the previous games, clearly. Cloud9 knew that TSM would be going towards Lee Sin. They wanted to ensure it with the Zin Zhao ban. So to me, that's just Blabber saying, yep. hey, I would rather play Diana against Lee Sin than against Zin if I don't think that I can make that matchup happen. No wards for Hootie, though. If he hookshots aggressively, especially, he could be in trouble. But he's playing it passively enough that it seems like he will be fine. Lee Sin spotted, though. And if Aurelia can't move, you don't win this 1v1. So uh, Perks is going to come up, and they're going to try to play around this. But I mean, this could be a, a 3v3 potentially. Oh, nice dodge. dodge. The hook shot. Both have smite, by the way, for this battle. There's the heal first coming into Blabber, and are going to see the rest of the fight come across because Theoe is now here as well. Lethal Tempo on. Soldiers getting several hundred damage as a smite second comes through for Spika, healing him back up. Taking the camp. Do you take the three on three? No, he's going to take it. Flash them into the team, but it's going to be enough. First blood in for Hooney. Looking for the second now as well. Flash the safety. Stun's going to land. And Hooney will get traded. Perks now back in the board. Buff transfer complete. Yeah, Perks is going to end up with the double buffs there. I have to see how the top lane wave was, because anytime you're roaming away from that, it's actually a good wave for Hootie. It's going to be pushing in towards him. That's why Perks is staying up here. If Hootie goes aggressive, there is a chance to try to kill him off. Fudge is trying to bait. They're going to go in. Meganar. Oh, he doesn't have the fury as the W lands. It's now up to Perks. Can he make it happen? Gets the first Q reset. Takes the second. Going for the auto tech, but he has no he spells left. This can't be the kill. Hootie solo kills his lane opponent. Yeah, they overplayed the bait, but Speak is in trouble. Speak is one hit from dead, but the stun's going to land. Blabber needs to catch the next Q, but then Ward Hop gets him out of range. And now PUE is going to trade back. So TSM again. Getting more than they lost. Two to one, but trying again for the top lane dive. No, PUE going to teleport to control it. And Hooney's like, it's not enough. Jump back to the wave. Man, what an explosive start to this game. I like the attempt at the bait there from Fudge and Perks, but Fudge was so low, and it was just kind of overplaying the bait there. 
you know, trying to be such a juicy target that he made himself a little bit too juicy and does end up going down. And because he was still so healthy, Perks couldn't actually get the trade kill. I mean, had you pulled that off and killed Huni off right after the TP, that would have been enormous. But instead, it is this scuffle up on the top side and so much of it was decided by the earlier roam from Huni. He had the push from top side. He's there a lot faster. Blabber, nice play. So actually dash out of that bird down think, again, bot side. Lost has flash, lost has cleanse, has to burn the former. Staying alive. Thankfully, he is as real. Of course, we knew Arcane Shift is down. Still 20 seconds on that cooldown. So good punish by Vulcan. Looks like he had flashed to catch him and makes that a cooldown trade. But with Hex Flash, you take that trade almost every time. Yeah, and Zven not going for the early tier, which is a little bit atypical. So more towards the laning power. Wants the extra AD, wants the extra CDR here. Grabs the call fields. Hooney's overextended, but with Spica behind him, they're just going to reset the wave. So he's yep. trading his health out to push this in. And it's a serious experience advantage, plus gold advantage on the side of Huni. So Fudge is in for a rough game. Blabber will try to take this opportunity to grab a dragon for himself, but it's a good cover there from Spika. Right. Because if you get stuck in that long lane as the Camille, that's where the matchup could start turning. But even though there is that XP advantage, and it certainly is relevant, uh, as Fudge does pull the attention, Cloud9 get the cross map play. So for the first time all series, it is Cloud9 who get first Drake. Every single time we have had very early dragons. All of them have been before the Rift Arrow to spawn. This is somewhat a difficult. Oh, this is looking risky. Okay, they're gonna find a slow on the blabber. He's gonna spike for health, gonna walk away, and it's gonna be enough to stay alive, I believe. Next sword arc Q's gonna walk in for the autos to find the stun. That Q will stun, and it's gonna be a setup now. Is it gonna be enough for the Vulcan? He's out of cooldowns, yeah. No way out, no flash, no way to walk, and he's gonna drop three to one TSM. Just a really nice match on the roam from Sword Art. He reads where they're going to go on the play, is there to defend the Raptors, buys the time for the rest of the TSM members to come in there, and it's a good punish from Sword Art. You know, Braum not known as a strong roaming champion, but see if uh, he wants to go on this. He waits for the passive to expire, then going forward. Oh, they're going to find a slow. Is it enough? Fudge, as he builds the Fury, can go to level 6. Megan oh. Perks just whiffs the ulti. Huni getting a little bit low, has an ult to drop some cooldowns. Fudge has uh, the ability to transform. They're gonna drop back or let it cool down. Huni's gonna be and here. then try again. Meganar swoop comes in, but it's not gonna be enough damage. And Perks dropping aggro, Fudge will die. Blabber waiting around, but that tower dive does not work. PoE roams and shuts it down. Poorly played by the C9 side there. If you're gonna commit to that, Perks needed to use flash ulti a lot earlier before Huni actually gets back to the tower. If you connect on the flash ulti while he's retreating through the jungle, you get him so softened up that there's not much outplaying the dive. Instead, they really slow played it and end up buying time for Power of Evil to arrive. Huni is going to be out of control here. Three kills already for the Camille on the top side. That's going to be a bit of a snowball here, so we can watch this fight yet again. Yeah, Lance is done. Cool. Auto Q, no problem. So he wants, he wants to wait for the hook shot, right? But now you just ult flash. flash. You ult flash, flash right there. And instead, he holds it. He tries to save the flash. Instead, he's not able to connect it. So he misses the Q reset. Fudge pulls aggro pretty early. That initial play was well played by Huni. But I think they just don't have the read that Power of Evil is actually going to be here. And Fudge tries to scoop him off the tower, ends up going down for his troubles. And misplay there from Cloud9 on the top side. And it's a pretty costly one. TSM running away with it up on that, that top lane. Huni's just going to be such a threat. Because yep. the, the later the game goes, the better it gets for Camille. As you get more CDRs, you get more levels. You do outscale than are in the 1v1 and become such a, a huge threat in that sideline. You can see Lost willing to play aggressively. Knows he has the cleanse and knows, honestly, my support's here. You're not going to go on me, Vulcan, and he doesn't. Well, they, they don't want to fight through him anyway, of course. A little bit of poke comes out as Van does now have his tier. As you mentioned, he slowed it down to get a slightly better power spike with the Caulfield's Warhammer first. Totally, you know, defensible and understandable option. Uh, he's never going to be late to his Muramana, so I'm generally a fan of not rushing tier if you don't have to, uh, especially when you are going to complete a different item first. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's actually proper building. Cool to see. And now, Spika, with infinite control over the top side of the map, is going to have no problems at all taking the Rift Herald. Yep. Perks a bit ahead in farm, so that is kind of nice for him. Fudge just using the ulti there to clear out the wave because he knows Rift Herald just went down, so he could be getting dove. And that's why he just expends the ultimate, tries to clear it out, and then he's going to have to back off. We know that Spika isn't going there, but he doesn't know. So he didn't actually get the luxury yeah. of staying around. And now with Spika showing mid, he will go back top, try to collect as much as he can. But a lot of damage going to be done to this tower. One plate already down, so we know at least three will fall. They get a lot of damage in, and... 
It's going to be more gold in the pocket of Power of Evil and Spica. It is a pretty early summon. They didn't seem like they actually wanted to maximize turret gold because you summon it a bit later. You spend the entire time locking it down. Like, yeah. you know, they could have stayed and autoed for several hundred more damage. It's like, no, no, no. We want to get it out. We want a power spike soon. But they don't even roam. I think they're maybe looking for a top lane play, right? But, you know, they do like the early summon. They get out the turret, but they don't actually dive top. It's just, ah, that could have been more gold. I think they may be looking for the option, couldn't find it, whatever. It's a very small point, but uh, not maximizing in that exact case, TSM. Yeah. As PUE will last to under turret. I think it's just a tempo play. Uh, Speak has been all about proactivity, about making plays, about spending, you know, not a lot of time hanging around the lanes, but when he shows up, he makes a play. So I think really he's saying, all right, Perks isn't mid. We'll go, we'll drop. We'll drop the Herald, we'll get some gold, I'll get back to farming. He checked the Raptors, those weren't up, so back to farming inside of the map. And I think he's just trying to stay super efficient here, stay up on farm, ahead of Blabber. You can see he's quite a few camps up, has had more of an impact on the lanes as well, and you know, things looking good for TSM. Perks is kind of the, the sole advantage they have there, and it's not even going to be much of an advantage because of the plates. It might even be you know even there as far as the gold does go. We'll see if Perks can make anything happen, because you want to be playing aggressively as this C9 comp. I, I think it's going to be so difficult in the later stages of the game to play into Braum, Ezreal, Azir as this very heavily dive comp. You have four melee champions. You're going to be fighting through Braum all, through Azir all, through the Braum wall. And that is so tough if you're not playing with a massive gold advantage or finding flanks from many angles. Well, right now, the angle is Dragon. Teleport is up for both top laners. Looks like... So he's almost taking a recouple, not quite able to do so. FTX gold advantage, 1,200, 1,300 at TSM. First dragon went Cloud9's way. Second dragon going their way as well. They have, for the most part, had bot control. And I want to point out, there is a very large CS lead down in the bottom side, 27, if my math is right. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah, all the action has been on the top side, but to your point, they are slowly winning in that 2v2. Looking good there, and... They're the ones playing the aggressive side of the matchup now. It was Ven having to sit back, lose farm on the Ezreal, but he was not down this far. Spika now proxying out this wave, getting tons of plates off this top side. Huni is just getting so rich. It's been all about playing through top. I mean, just look at the enormous disadvantage that Fudge has. 1,700 gold plus a significant amount of experience. Huni's almost level 10. Fudge is still 8. I'm not sure how far he has to go to get 9, but down a lot. And they're even waiting here for the long con, trying to find a pick. As Fudd pushes out, if he goes up too far, he could just be dying. Yeah, well, gets the CS out of the turret at the very least. Sven left a little on the bottom lane. Gonna have no problems there. Vulcan nearby. They spot him the flash. Not gonna bring him very far. They're gonna find the stun. They're gonna find Here's a teleport Berks. coming across for both. So three on three coming across the top lane. Uni dropped dangerously low. Ult comes across and he's got nowhere out. Yes, walks <laughs> into the swords and falls. Perks able to get a kill back on the board. And that shutdown was so big. There was a nice kick from Spika to try to buy time, but with the Vanguard's Edge, with that ulti behind you, you can't walk through it. You take the damage, so he had no way out. And they do get the counterplay. Vulcan so quick on the ulti to actually peel for Fudge there. And Fudge, with the early Bramble Vest, gives him some chance at surviving through that. Perk's TP was very fast, so was PoE's, but they had the extra damage. They get the shutdown. And now it's an early Blade of the Rune King completion here for Aurelia. And you can start to go wild. I'm going to be interested. Will they move the Aurelia out to match the Camille or keep their current lane assignments? Well, looking at it again, they're fighting over the Raptors in the top side of middle, and looks like Blabber's going to get the better end of it. He gets most of the minions. He's going to be okay. Looking at a fight now in mid lane. Backflip goes on a Vulcan. He's got to be careful. They're going to find the stun. Hootie again forced to run. Good hook shot gets him away. Yeah, going to be able to dodge out on Blabber's ult. Blabber trying to pull him out, but Hootie had the buffer there, is able to hook shot to safety, and it's Power of Evil pushing up here against Fudge. I mean, Fudge, yes, he's out of the Camille matchup, but this one's probably even less fun. Uh, has the early Bramble. That's yeah. not going to help you against the Zir. <laughs> nope, they don't apply on hit effects. They don't count as an auto attack. You get nothing out of Bramble whatsoever against literally all of Azir's kit. It does absolutely nothing unless he raw auto attacks, which he shouldn't be doing. 3v2 in the bottom river. Teleport coming across to defend it again as that's Fudge joining up. Mini Nar walks fast, not going to matter. Top lane, outer turret falls. First of the game. Goes to Power of Evil after, I believe, four turret plates were claimed. Mm -hmm. Across that one, three in mid as well, at least. Uh, two in bot lane, but TSM, you can see, still 1,500 gold ahead. They're looking really good right now. Next Dragon goes up in two minutes. Cloud9, to their credit, have gotten the first two. 
Yeah. That's this, that's helping it. This one has been the trade, right? It's been bot side priority for top side priority. TSM collecting plates, C9 collecting dragons. And then that adds pressure to make good on that by getting the soul because the individual dragons are just not worth nearly as much as the completed soul itself. So that is going to be their goal. And the question will be, are these soul laners for TSM powered up enough that they can contest and stop that snowball towards an infernal soul, which is going to be very high priority for this team that Cloud9 has drafted where they have a lot of dive and they want to get over that critical mass where you can 100 to zero people burst them down on that initial engage because if you can't make that happen, it's just going to be a nightmare against a zero and Braum with four melee. Oh, nice play mid lane, not going to find the ulti, but Perks is still left a little bit alone. Two versus three comes back around, but the healing is never going to be enough. They shut him down in the 3v1, and Sven just has to walk away. Sonic Wave nearly landed. That wouldn't have been a kick flash. They were both on cooldown. Wouldn't have taken it, but as mid is under fire, the best they can do is wave click. Clan. We'll keep that turret alive. Dragons up in one minute. Perks is out of every cooldown. Yeah, no TP to join, but he will have enough time to run out of base. We'll see if the ulti is going to be up by then, because it's still quite a bit of time here remaining. Does mean, though, Spika's going to get another Herald. So now you know mid lane tower is basically dead if you actually secure this. It's already very, very low. With Perks dead and no TP, I can't really see them committing to trying to get a steal. So it should be TSM with the shutdown, TSM with the Herald, extending the gold advantage even further. And as Herald drops, they got 25 seconds to walk the rest of the way over. Going to save his smite. Must not have a second charge available. You can see it's actually uh, two-thirds of the way till his next one. Grabs it. Evil able to easily walk down there. And with the 2,000 gold lead, they should generally have the power to make this theirs. Divine Sunderer done for the Camille. Of course, we know the Gore Drinker's done as well. Will it be a summon for mid, or will it just be some auto attacks? Looks like they are. Whoops, that's a turret shot. And they're going to try to knock it down with just power people's auto attacks. And speak is the same. Yes, they will kill it. And as he's still in combat, can't summon just yet. Time to walk towards Dragon. Now, I wonder if they actually drop it for pressure around this Dragon here. TSM is starting it up. Cloud9 are in the area. They've been working towards the soul. They want to keep snowballing. Be careful. They know Nar is taking the wave right above them, and he's going to be mega very soon. They can track that somewhat. Fudge is going to be a factor in this one. Full bar, ready to go. That ulti can be lethal. TSM missing two of their ultimates right now. That's definitely going to matter. Lost hits three with True Shot Barrage. Smite fight coming in soon. Who's it going to be? Diana or Lee Sin? It's Diana. Three Dragons of Cloud Nine. Perks on the side up against Huni, but Huni's winning this battle. A little bit more damage. Diana comes across. It's going to be one for nothing. And so far, it's okay. Blabber forced to stopwatch. Huni running away under his turret, but the turret's not there anymore. Yeah, Perks is going to die. They're going in for more. They find the Q. They find a scoop, and it's just set right up. It's going to be a second. TSM may lose the dragon, but they're going to get three kills. They're going to get so much more. I think they're going to get two towers. They have the Herald here with a five on two. You get both the tier one and the tier two. This is going to be 5K plus on the FTX gold advantage at the end of this play. And Zven, you're dead as well. Oh, Spika got the kill. Spika takes the sonic wave, the resonating strike, and solos out. Sven, 9-2 to two on the scoreboard. This turret's gone, 4-1 in that score as well. Man, it really, Perks just overextending and trying to get out. Nice Oh, no, they step. shouldn't have burned those cooldowns. Vulcan could die for this one. Why are you walking up to a tier 2 where your turret's already dead? It's one kill picked up. The counter punch, not too bad. Knocks down the Camille. Spika on the front line. Has to be respectful. Down below 1k. Cloud Bunch 9. Oh, does Perks try? Without an ulti, it's not going to happen. One for one. Yeah, going to be able to back off. They do at least get the shutdown on to Fudge, so getting some gold for him. But Huni has been so accelerated in this game. Up to seven kills. They're GP. Oh, wow. Okay, Cloud 9. Again, they have been so aggressive in this series. Even when they're down in gold, they've often found some good fights. That's a stun's going to land in a lost. He might be stunned, but it won't matter. Perks is on for kill number three. Forget I ever doubted him. Cloud9 are good at finding these. Good plays here. Cloud9 are playing comp where you have to go aggressive, right? And you can't get gun shy because you've had some misplays. Perks and Cloud9 overextended to try to kill Huni around the dragon. Got punished for it, but they were trying to get back the maximum after that misplay, not getting shy, not getting complacent here. But on the initial play, I mean, you were just chunked down so low that unless everyone is hard committing instantly to Huni at the same time, you're never going to win this as Perks, right? This is a Huni who's very, very fed, and Perks is taking the fight from about 40% HP. So Huni's able to get the initial kill, alt onto Blabber, force out the stopwatch, back it up, and because everyone is coming in here faster, 
for TSM. The flash ulti from Power of Evil anticipating the flashes in retreat was just beautiful. They got so much off of that. Still, 4.3 thousand. The FTX gold advantage for TSM. PoE has been outstanding, but they are staring down the barrel of Infernal Soul, and that's going to flip the script if it happens. That's going to be, I think, a really good equalizer here for Cloud9 if they can make it go through. TSM have been winning fights, but Cloud9 have been punching. I think one of the most difficult parts here is so much of their advantage you know, is in the bot lane. They, they kind of prioritize playing around that. But how can Zven effectively get out his damage and stay safe against the super fed Camille Lee Sin against the Azir? Like, that is very, very difficult. And I think that's going to be their struggle is when you show up to these dragons, if you can find the flank angle, it's going to be really tough for Cloud9 yeah. to keep him safe. So it's going to be up to those X factors about the engage, finding that perfect ultimate from Diana, finding the Meganar from Fudge. Because in that straight front-to-back fight, you lose. And also, if Camille gets the perfect flank onto your AD carry, you also lose. Watch for him. I mean, I will say Zven's uh, positioning is usually quite good. Uh, his one death was, I guess to be fair, getting caught out in the jungle. But he's not the one dying in the fights. He's not yep. very good at playing far away. Cyril's grudge now done. The Muramana is, I believe, uh, 57 mana away. So, you know, just under 20 auto attacks after the cooldown. Not going to be too horrible to get that one. And that'll be a power spike. And it will be, I think, just in time for the Infernal Soul battle. So watch for Zven. He's got his flash up as well. Could be reasonable. That's a good two-item power spike to be on by comparison. Of course, Lost down in gold might not be able to hit his Muramana in time. Uh, Divine Sender, the more defensive option, though he's not going to be frequently the target. Yeah. We can see Blabber also completed his two items, has the Zonias. That's really big because he used the stopwatch in that last play. Completing the Zonias is a very big deal here. Perk's trying to push in, but I think they're just going to back off this. They want to pressure that top lane tier one, try to get some more gold here. But I wonder if they're just going to trade for gold and say, no, we're not actually going to fight. With them on the top side, Perks has no TP. I think they're not going for Dragon, which I do find a bit surprising. But I think the read is we lose the fight, so they're not going to take the fight. They're going to instead just utilize the pressure that they have around Soul to collect gold on the top side and hope that they can find a better angle later on. Here we go. Eight seconds. Right now, it is all mid control for TSM. Cloud9 may not get that angle. They are overloading the top yep. side, so they're going to give this one up and they say, hey, look, we'll make this trade again in five minutes. A dragon in stats, I want to say it's about 400 gold. That is generally going to be an accurate statement there. Obviously, a champion like Braum gets nothing at all. And, you know, Huni, Spika, and Power of Evil and Lost, they actually get more or less full value. And that's why you kind of ballpark it around there. <laughs> top lane editor, it dies. Yeah, sorry, your recall is not going to get, you know, much for you there. Oh, they're going to go for the chase down. They can get caught. There's no tier one here. Nope. Okay. They're not going to go yeah. for the chase. And so, okay, you can, you know, pretend the gold lead moves by that number here. But again, in four minutes time, the next dragon map trade could happen. And, and you know, for comparison, a, a, a turret is worth 500 gold. So in a lot of cases, a turret for Drake is good unless it turns into soul. Yeah, and TSM was up 5K thereabouts earlier. It is now a 3.4K advantage, so slightly closing. A lot of members up on this top side, and if a fight breaks out here, it can mean a lot. Uh, these risky moves can decide games. If you die post 20 minutes here on the top side, Azir can absolutely move towards Baron, can absolutely threaten that. It's going to make things tough as Spika trying to shadow Power of Evil, make sure that he's safe, pushing out the waves, they're checking all the brushes. And they did not quite see the recall come through from Perks. He was just in Flag of War. You could see you know, a couple of brush checks come through from PoE. As Pika was controlling around him. And no, Baron is the look. Volk going to put a control ward down. Knows, okay, they're not on it just yet. Uh-oh, I got to get away. We can see that three are coming towards me. I got to walk away. And that means TSM get to own this jungle. They put the deep wards in. They get rid of the control wards. And Cloud9 playing with just Flag of War again. It would be interesting to see if kind of the inverse situation of the previous game happens where TSM tries to force Baron if Cloud9 moved towards Dragon. I mean, you would be giving up a lot to do that, but they have a legitimate threat of just bursting it down. Azir is so high damage, and Cloud9 are trying desperately to maintain vision in this area, but that is the last pink there for Vulcan, so it gets tough. You've got to be able to move forward into the river to clear out those pinks in the pit if you want to be able to maintain vision. And so far, they have not been able to. And Huni is using this time to shove in the bot lane. He is still very far ahead in the 1v1. He's pressing in and now taking away some of these jungle camps. 
All right, sword art towards the oh, front Spica's line. Are they going to gonna find any damage? Spika wants in. Smite comes through to Blaver. Vulcan on the front has to be careful. 1K health finds the flash stun. Has to get out now as well. Has the anything on the side of the map. It's going to be one for nothing so far. Good kill in for Lost. Now on the bottom side, look for Blaver. Blaver's going to pop a stopwatch. Perks down as well. TSM 2-0 with a fight. Looking to go 2-1 in the series. And Blaver's going to walk away. Three stay alive for Cloud9. They keep the jungler, but they don't have the chance at a fight. TSM can and will turn for Baron. Yeah, this, this Baron is going to be there, so I don't see how how Blabber can prevent this. Just knock down the blast plant there. Blabber has no flash. So unlikely for him to be able to even get in range. It's just dying way too quick. TSM find the flank. They find the engage. Oh. They get the kills. They get the Baron, and they're even going to try to go for more. Uh, they won't get anything special there as Blabber smites the big Krug. But yeah, the chance, right? Pee-wee had flash, had his ult, could always go for a scoop. But no, not going to have that one happen right now. So. The Baron buff is on 245, well in time for the next dragon of the game. And let's see what they can even get, because t already got four turret kills. Replay again. Yep, just about the wraparound here. Spika finds the angle here from behind. Poonie coming up from the bot lane, had pressure bot, has the flank as well, gets in on the Blabber. Blabber's forced to use his ulti on the one member, but Sword Art has the exhaust on it. Blabber's ultimate was completely useless. And on the top side of that fight, Spika, Power of Evil, they chase down Vulcan, they chase down Perks, they kill them both off. So neutralized on the bottom side, killed off on the top side. Cloud9, their options are closing very fast. They do not win inside this game. They do not win in 5v5 without some sort of a miracle engage. And TSM are looking to put themselves to max point. We'll see if they can keep Cloud9 away from that soul, which would be one of the few ways yeah. potentially back in for Cloud9. We know. Oh, he sidesteps it. Perks doesn't have an ultimate for this fight. This looks pretty easy for Huni. Takes the first backflip, waiting for his cooldowns again. The Rune King heal might not be enough. He gets a stun, gets a second Q, and it doesn't matter. Huni comes out of that fight 1v1 at half health. Yeah, he's making it look easy. Didn't even use the ulti. Didn't need it, and he knew it, so he's going to save that for something more important here. Fudge trying to threaten with the Meganar, but you can just back up. He's getting whittled down. It's going to expire, so now the threat of the engage is no longer there. Perks is down. You're pushing all three lanes. It is time for a TSM to get paid, collecting these towers, extending the gold lead, and then moving back to take another dragon for themselves. Well, mid lane turret, dangerously low, won't quite die, but it's soon. Top lane has been shepherded in. Who is going to knock that one down? That'll be six turrets. All the ones outside the base are going to be gone. Dragon has now spawned as well. Azir is already there. They're going to leave Spika as a more mobile and more engaged focus member of the team. Huni indeed gets the top turret. At the same time, the dragon falls. TSM controlling so many of the cards. They're still not yet to Dragon Soul but they've prevented Cloud9 from getting there, and they've just kept the gold lead growing. The Red Bull Baron power play, 3,500 and a Dragon. Soon to add probably 500 more if Inhibitor Turret falls. FTX gold advantage, 8,000. I mean, it's just absolutely out of control. There's so many luxury items as well. You know, three stopwatches across the board. You have the locket, you have the exhaust, all of these tools to actually shut down the potential of C9 to get that burst, to get that under zero that they are completely dependent upon at this point in the game to get a win. And they just haven't been able to execute any skirmishes. There's too many missed skill shots. There's too many failed engages from Cloud9, where TSM are playing perfectly around these sidestepping abilities, disengaging, playing it slow, playing to their win conditions. And now it feels like they've just built such a big advantage that it's almost impossible for Cloud9 to really come back from here. And he's going to walk away cleanly. Okay, take your reset pretty soon. Get the jungle on the way out. Blabber can't find it. Looks to the rocket belt. Nope, no targets. Okay, out we go. Yeah, cool. Money inventory's got to be a lot. Yeah. They they have, have they have gotten several turrets. There you go. Over 1,000 apiece. Some well over 2K. 3,000 for Huni. All right, great. You know, the gold lead in inventory, oh. it was only, you know, 2,000. Now they've actually cashed in with everything the items come across. Hootie's 4,000 gold ahead of Fudge. Yeah. That is just disgusting. The pressure towards top lane worked out so well for TSM this game. Not only did he complete the Sterics, he gets uh, major pieces towards his GA. That is so frightening. Everyone has a stopwatch available except for Power of Evil. And he got the death cap. He has the damage there to follow up on any sort of play they make. DSM just got to keep okay, things lost. rolling. 
Q's gonna spot. Okay, jump on him. Instantly, Arcane shift out. Blabbert half health. He's gonna get True Shot Barraged. Won't die, but is gonna be in danger. Here comes the rest of the squad. Leeson's come in. Gonna find not much of a stun. There's the ulti across Blabberos, but it's not gonna matter. Stopwatch buys the time, but it's still gonna be Vulcan drop in and out. The rest of the kills are coming through. TSM already with three. Looking to fudge now for number four. Looking tasty. Finds himself a couple of stuns, but it's not gonna matter. They're still on the chase. The ulti will not save him. TSM are insatiable. A flash follow for Hooney. Wants the tower dive. Stopwatch dodges the arrow. Lost flies in as well. And it's time to take out the base. There we go. Hooney gets himself the ace. And it's TSM who are going to get themselves the base. It's going to be 2-1 to one in the series right now. This turret's going to fall. And the base is going to come along with it. TSM dominating here in game three. Putting themselves to match point. And who do you want to carry performance? 10 kills in the top lane. As they knock down the rest of it, burn the stop watch for good measure, add some DPM stats, hit in Vulcan, the Nexus will fall! And TSM are one game away from eliminating Cloud9. Man, Speak has been so good this series. All three games has really been impactful in the early stages. This time it was all about top lane, plays towards that side of the map, they deprioritized the bot lane, but it didn't really matter. Ezreal was getting some farm, was scaling up, and they have so much safety in this comp that it's very difficult to pull off a proper dive from Cloud9's composition. Like, I felt like they had to be playing this comp from 5k up at 20 minutes like to win. It feels so difficult. And when you lose control of the map, when you lose control of vision, and you're, you're trying to dive through a Braum with exhaust, through the Azir wall and soldiers, it's so hard to pull off. And Cloud9, you know, they picked a, a very tough comp to execute, and they just didn't execute at the level that they need to. I mean, they had some good plays, but we also saw a lot of whiffed ultimates from perks. We saw a lot of failed engages. We saw, you know, Blabber fail to really find the multi-man ultimates that you need. Yep. And yes, that is that is a high barrier to execution, but that are, that is the, the comp that you pick for yourself. Those are the champions that you pick for yourself, yep. where you don't get to make mistakes. You've got to execute on these dives. You've got to make these plays happen. And so many times they couldn't. They failed the dive on Hooney top. Then the TP comes in on the bait. Hooney gets the kill. Hooney gets out. Yep. You know, these plays can't happen with that kind of comp if you want to win. Well, we're one game away from no caps at Worlds in Europe or North America. DSM take the lead again in this series, and they are one win away from a trip to the World Championship. Way to return. This day from Analyst House will be getting us ready for match point.